How are you this evening? Uh, I'm doing well. Hang on, this afternoon in LA, but yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, we're we're not so lucky here in the Midwest. We've got a hundred degrees and uh, two hours ahead of you, so you know it's uh, a yeah. it's a whole new ball game here, Leanna, in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, no, I've heard. <laughs> well, you know, we appreciate awesome. you doing this. We really appreciate it, and you know, we definitely will keep you along. But you know, I, you know, kind of before we get into it, like I saw that you were uh, at, before it closed down, you were at Saved by the Max, kind of catching up with uh, some some uh, old cast members from the show. What was it like hanging out over there? I was able to go. Uh, before it closes, oh, well, yeah. cool. it was cool. No, it, yeah, no, it was it was actually really fun. Um, and it was like you know the land of the super fan, and it was um, no, I, we I had a really good time. So yeah, I produced I was producing some content for um, Mari Lopez's family, and so we did an episode wow. there, which was fun. And um, we didn't tell people he was coming, so we just got to watch people like um, looks of surprise, and stuff, which was fun. <laughs> So yeah, that, that was pretty fun. That's awesome. But uh, getting into Say by the Bell, you mentioned doing some stuff for Mario Lopez there. You guys worked on Say by the Bell together. How was the audition process uh, for getting on Say by the Bell for you? And how did you learn that uh, you got the role of Tori Scott? Well, you know what? It was one of those stories where I auditioned for another part. I can't even remember what part it was, but I auditioned for another part on it. And my agent called and said, oh, you didn't get the part, but they said they liked you and they're going to remember you. And I was like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I do that a lot. <laughs> and, um, and then sure enough, one day I, it, it happened really fast. I got a call saying they want you to go to producers. And I think there was probably five of us, three to five of us. And the way it works in, um, in television is you negotiate your deal before you even read for producers. And so you negotiate the deal and you like sign it and it goes in a, you know, it goes in the middle of the envelope. And, um, and then you they get called in and you go in and you do your audition. So, um, yeah. And then I found out I got it right away. So it was, it was really fast. It was really, well, really you fast. Know, you come in and you do 10 episodes and you're uh, immediately a main cast member. Kind of what was your knowledge heading into it? Obviously, uh, Tiffany Thiessen and Elizabeth Berkeley were, had their contracts had expired and they were kind of elsewhere. They weren't uh, working on the show. So you kind of come in replacing them established cast members that's a kind of a lot of pressure kind of what was your knowledge coming in kind of of the tory scott character and the idea that you're kind of replacing two you know incumbents from the show yeah i gotta say i have no idea i mean i was um a student at ucla during the time that i did it so i wasn't really watching the show so i didn't really know much about it and i really didn't know much about the controversial nature of my character <laughs> until <laughs> recently, really, um, to all this nostalgia. There's been a lot of 90s nostalgia popping up left and right. So only re recently did I realize there was some uh, controversy about my character. So, um, I mean, I did know it was ridiculous, obviously, the you know, things don't make sense on the show. And sometimes <laughs> I'm one of the gangs, sometimes I'm dating one of them, sometimes I'm not, you know, I mean, in the, so I knew, obviously, it's, it's, you know, it's not a super realistic show, of course, <laughs> but, um, you know, so. Yeah, not a lot of continuity with the show. We talk about that a lot uh, on our podcast, reviewing mm -hmm. every episode here. But what are some of your memories exactly. of working with the cast and crew, uh, whether it's the other kids, Dennis Haskins, uh, Peter Engel, the executive producer and creator? Yeah, you know, um, it's a long time ago, but um, I remember <laughs> it, was, it was really fun. I had my own, like, parking spot at NBC, so I felt really, you know, big time. But, you know, in the days before, you know, Instagram and social media, you couldn't really brag about anything. So, um, you know, I don't know. It's such a different era now. Um, but, uh, you know, it just, you know, I came in, I, I did, did my job, and it was, it was fun. You know, it, it definitely was like, Oh, I get it. Every every show has like a social message, you know. So like every episode was about some, you know, some strong social message. Um, and I remember telling Peter Engel that I wanted to go to film school and be a producer, and he laughed at me. And and I, I remember, you know, later, you know, now looking back now, it probably seemed ridiculous because I, I know I looked really young, um, and I'm sure you know he was like, yeah, right. So. Um, so I knew, you know, even then that my future was probably not going to be acting. And I was already, uh, you know, interested in studying, um, producing and some other things. So I, you know, it was, it was a, it was a fun experience. And, um, you know, I only did 10, like, it, you know, I had no idea that some people would care this many years later and <laughs> want to even, 
know who I am all these years later. You know, it just seemed like a, it was the first live action Saturday morning show. And so it was a bit of an experiment when it was on. And, you know, up until then, it was just cartoons on Saturday morning. And so it was a little bit of an experiment. No one knew it was going to be like a cultural touch point, so to speak, um, back in the day. So, you know, you never know. And so, yeah, like... Well, uh, Leanna, you did, you did, like you said, 10 episodes and, uh, you know, we were going to get in it and we we're going to analyze, you know, every single moment from every single one of them, but you know what, we're, we'll, we'll skip that for now. And we'll just look <laughs> at, uh, drinking and driving was kind of one that stands out that you did because it, you talked about, uh, shows with social messages. That one certainly had it, especially for Saved by the Bell. You talked about Saturday mornings and kind of what it was. We'd seen a few episodes that kind of, uh, you know, flirted the line with more controversial subject matter, but, on, on this particular episode, <laughs> Drinking and Driving, what is your memories of that episode? Because it was one that was more serious in nature. Yeah, I mean, people you know every single episode I did, I think, had a social message, clearly. But this one, um, all I remember, really, to be honest, is that my character drank orange pop or something, and it was like, my character, the rebel that didn't drink. Honestly, that's all <laughs> I remember. I don't remember the rest of the show. Because like, I know they did wheelchair basketball, and they did earthquake safety, and they did... Um, team line and they did uh you know every episode seemed like had some some message and um so i don't really remember it was a toga party come to think of it toga party um and yes then, i don't even remember did they get in trouble for drinking and driving i don't even remember what happened what happened in the episode yeah they, they got caught and and uh you know they tried to pass it off i think uh, zach developed a scheme as he always does uh, to try to push mm-hmm. it off onto uh, onto somebody else, but in the end, of course, you know the teens. All Peter Engel always told us when we had him on that you know the teens in the end had to learn a lesson, and they always did. So you guys, yeah. Yeah. you know, you, you did the right thing by drinking, you know, orange soda and getting through it. <laughs> it, it, it. It's still, you know, and it, do you, you know, when you look back and you talk about kind of uh, I don't know controversy if that's the right word about your character, but you know, there's. You know, there's there's funny memes that you'll see out there. Someone talking about you know yeah. Tori episode to say by the bell. Like I don't know if you've seen those. Like does that does it does it kind of get to you? Is it like hey I came in and did my job. I didn't really know. Like does it kind of get to you that there's there's a there's like a backlash sometimes with regards to your show. Although I love the episode you're in. You know that, I just yeah you know. no it's it's I, I find it, it's all it's all funny. It's all part of the it's all part of the game. But um, one thing that was funny is they wrote somebody wrote a comedic parody on Funny or Die but it was done as if Tori wrote it. Now, obviously it was written as if it was a letter from Tori and I was all bent out of shape that I wasn't in the, I don't know who was it, Jim, Jimmy Fallon show that had like a, had a, somebody had a late night show and they had a reunion show and I wasn't on it. And so they, yeah. it was as if Tori was all bent out of shape and it said it was written by whoever it was written by. And I thought it was really funny, but literally people wrote on there like, Tori, you just, you're washed up. I can't believe, like, as if I had really written it. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, thanks, guys, you know. But, you know, it was, I thought it was a pretty funny parody. Um, but because there's no of the non sequiturs, you know, the Tory non sequiturs for sure. But, um, but yeah, that, I remember that time. Even my brother-in-law, like, thought I really wrote it. And I'm like, no, I didn't write it. <laughs> so it written by so-and-so. But I remember everybody thought I wrote it. So there's been a couple of moments where I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then no one believes you when you say, like, actually, I was at college and I went to film school and I didn't want to be an actor. No one believes me. They all think, yeah, 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 it's good. I'm acting. You know, no one believes, believes me. So, you know, there's that. But, you know, what can you do? You can't do anything about it. And, and you know, it's a TV show. So I hope people, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But, um, you know, there's a lot of things that, that were funny and, didn't make sense on the show so but yeah did you ever do you know about the mike i think is it chuck klosterman wrote a book called um sex drugs and cocoa puffs and yes. in there he writes about the tory principle and that's like when there's when the show jumps the shark so to speak and when it has um you know when things are you know anachronistic and don't add up and so like my character wasn't in the graduation episode but i was you know in these other episodes and and so when it doesn't make sense anyway so yeah, it's so it's kind of it's it is sort of a backhanded compliment that my my character is known for being so strange that it, it has its own principle or that it's like the penultimate <laughs> example of like when shows don't make sense or the chronology from episode to episode doesn't make sense. Um, I'm sure they didn't think kids would even notice or care, you know. But I guess someone was paying attention. But um, 
but yeah, you know, it was fun and I'm, I'm grateful for it. It was a fun, fun memory. And, um, you know, like I said, I didn't really think about it all these years and, you know, just, you know, in the last couple of years have I finally agreed to talk about it a little bit. And I went to the, <laughs> it started by me doing, there was a, a say by the bell um, parody musical in New York. And I, I went to that and it was really fun. And I just saw how much the audience was like enjoying sort of reliving the memories and, 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 and the funny, absurd parts of the show. And so I, I feel like I loosened up a little bit and that's why I went to the got involved with the save of the max a little bit and I came and supported them and um you know doing the show so you know it's uh it was a lot of fun I actually knew Elizabeth Berkeley from the acting class believe it or not so wow. it was not like so when people do try to make out like you know I had this big uh I, I Tori did something with uh you know to get rid of Tina uh, what was her name not Tina um oh my gosh Kelly Kapowski and oh, of course. um that um you know people are like it, you what what happened to them you know Tori killed them off or whatever you know so <laughs> obviously I hope people are smart enough to know obviously I had nothing to do with that I was just coming and doing my job but it was it was a lot of fun it was a fun experience and um you know it paid for my a chunk you know I worked through college I went to UCLA and I and acting in commercials and doing shows like that paid for um my luxury, the luxury of me being able to go to college and grad school, because I went to a film school immediately mm-hmm. after undergrad, and I'm eternally grateful that I was able to do that job rather than wait tables or do something else. So, <laughs> um, eternally grateful. But I don't think I was ever really that good of an actor, you know. So I never like when people are like, I think it's pretty obvious that, that probably wasn't my destiny on the show. But um, you know, it's uh, but so I'm even more grateful because I don't even think you know it was my thing really. I'm more of a I'm I'm a behind the camera person, you know. I'm a I'm a director and a, and a photographer, and I really enjoy being behind the camera. So that's really where I'm supposed to be. Absolutely. So Peter Engel was wrong. You've gone out and you've shown him, and you've done it. You're you're behind the camera. You're producing. You have your own company, uh, Creel Studios here. But before we get into that, uh, you mentioned the gra- graduation episode. How that didn't really make sense. It was kind of out of the timeline. Uh, but uh, yeah. for that episode, Kelly and Jesse are back just in time, but there's no Tori. Uh, we're wondering, did she graduate? Did she have a falling out with the group since Kelly and Jesse are back? <laughs> uh, did she join a biker yeah, gang and I'm quit sure. school? So we wanted to get your yeah, theory sure on what the, happened to Tori. I'm sure that was the last, yeah, the la- the, here's my theory. They finish up a series and then, and then they realize, oh man, we can make 10 more episodes really quick. <laughs> and I literally just wanted to make 10 episodes as fast and as cheaply as they could so instead of replacing me with two characters they just replaced they just brought in one girl one new cast member they did it as cheaply and as fast as possible because i think even one of those episodes were one or two of them were montage episodes like so they just tried to make 10 or 12 more shows as fast as humanly possible as quick and cheap as possible so did a couple montage ones and um brought in one character to replace two wham bam thank you ma'am and they they had like another dozen shows they could exploit and because it's it's um, G-rated. It can play in every market anywhere in the world. And so it, it, I think it probably has played in every market everywhere in the world. It seems like it's been everywhere. Um, so it was, it was fun. You know, I did a, I did a, I was a history major undergrad and I did a history of children's television independent study. Like I talked to some teacher and they gave me credits for doing research and doing a report on the, um, history of children's television <laughs> programming. And I went <laughs> nice. and interviewed all the executives and stuff. So I was always, you know, a hustling and it was, it was a hustle for me. And I somehow got like credits and, um, and, you know, again, I'm, it was, I'm so, so grateful because without acting, I wouldn't have been able to go to UCLA. I wouldn't be able to go to film school. Um, so I'm very, very grateful. And um, I think when I produced my first couple movies, I even wrote a letter to um, Michael Eisner, who was still running Disney and he was running Disney when, I, when my sisters and I were doing the parent trap shows there and I wrote him a letter and he wrote me back. But I was like, so I've always been extremely grateful um, for the opportunities that I had, even if it was because I was a triplet or even if it was because I got on this random show called Tampa, whatever. It allowed me to, um, to have a really amazing life and to get this great opportunity to get more education and go on and, and do other things in this life. And, um, and so I'm very, very grateful. I'm very aware of um, where I came from and that, you know, it almost wasn't. And so I'm, I'm really grateful because no one in my family, no one had 
was in the business. I didn't know anything about it. So, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of major luck that we fell into it. So. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, you love to hear stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, kind of a one last day by the bell question here, kind of a broader look at your sure. character. Uh, uh, here comes this biker chick, which is very different for Zach. He's used to more of a girly girl cheerleader, sometimes a bimbo type. Uh, but he'd do his schemes, throw out wisecracks, but you'd give it right back to him. You'd get, give it right back. And What do you think the connection was between Zach and Tori? Um, that's a good question. Well, I think sometimes... I had a connection and said, sometimes I think I would read the script and be like, Oh, I guess we're just friends this week. You know, I guess <laughs> on and off. It seemed like sometimes I was, it was on again, off again. Yeah. Um, but I think it's always a fun character. I love playing the, the, um, bad girl is a fun character to play and, you know, or the tough girl. So that was, that was really fun. And even though I remember I made a, I really wanted to wear a real biker's jacket and they made me wear sort of like just a black leather jacket. I was remember being upset. And then another time they wanted me to wear a dress to the limbo, like a dance scene limbo and yeah. I marching into the producers and saying, ah, Tori would not wear a dress. It's not her <laughs> character. And, um, and they let me wear pants. And um, so, you know, it's, it was, it was, it was a really fun character. I'd rather, you know, but I honestly, I haven't seen all the episodes, so I haven't, I don't have the encyclopedic knowledge. In fact, I did some things that at, at the Save of the Max, people were referencing shows and stuff, and I was, I didn't understand what they were talking about at all. <laughs> there was some character dressed in a crocodile outfit and whatever, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. So the weird thing is, I, I haven't even watched every episode, so, um, but I do think it definitely captures an era, and an era that they just wouldn't be possible today you know he couldn't talk about girls and and it just seems so like uh not pc today when you look back it's like oh my gosh um so it definitely feels like a little old-fashioned and it was a little bit old-fashioned then too um so it's kind of fun i feel like my character was a little more modern you know and wasn't the traditional 50s you know girly girl which i feel like was the archetype for a lot of like the girls on the show but yeah which is true but you you were you were a sock hop singer for one episode as well but that you know so you know you, yes. you into that mold for one one time but uh before I let you go literally Leanna, you they know, probably literally they pro i think they um they heard me sing and they were like let's that's my they lit i'm literally voiceover they they had someone come in and sing my part and i just was voiceover. <laughs> i was that that of a singer and a bad dancer i couldn't dance they're like uh oh. i'm sure they just repurpose that from a former episode or something because um yeah yeah <laughs> I, I don't bad. think anyone i don't think any of the cast sang their parts on that on the uh, as, as a member of the five aces but uh you know before i let you go liana because you've been so gracious to talk about about this and to go back and it's not something that you you know have been doing all that long or really wanted to revisit but the, your life is so different now. I mean, you're, you talk about being behind the camera. You have your own production company, um, and I believe you, uh, you know, were part. Uh, you produced your first film, uh, you know, back in in the '90s. I think '97. Yeah. Kind of talk about the, your life now and what uh, what it's like on the production side, and, and talk about your uh, your production company and kind of uh, you know where people can find you today. Well, it's um, it's con I'm constantly evolving. That's for sure. I feel like I'm so young to have keep reinventing myself, but um, but. Uh, yeah, I went to film school and went right out of film school. I partnered with an investment banker and we, um, and I was basically the sweat equity and he was the equity and we produced 10 independent feature films. So right out of the gate, I was like three movies a year, busy, busy, busy. And then I realized, Oh, I don't think I want to be an independent film producer in the nineties. You may have heard it was a bit schmarmy. So I was like, Oh, I don't think I want to do this. And, um, so we sold the company and then I started traveling and taking pictures and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I really, that's right. I love photography. When I was like a little kid, I want to be a photographer. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, you know, I started um, the photography um, business as I started just taking pictures and then people kept started hiring me to do it. And so I, I started, um, you know, doing photography and then I quickly got lured back into doing production because um, it was in an era when the, um, you know, webisodes and content was, and, and so being able to make content inexpensively quickly, you know, was, was the name of the game. And it was, um, you know, so I, I was kind of on the forefront of creating like, you know, um, web content, shoulder content, additional content for TV shows, and we did a lot for Food Network and this and that. And then that sort of led to doing more food and wine. And then 
So I went from Creole photo, which was this photography, to Creole films when I was doing a lot of video and we were doing a ton of video and still content for TV shows and stuff like that. And then it went to Creole studio because I'm like, then I started doing more like other content uh, materials and stuff that was, you know, branded content and stuff. So it like, wasn't just films anymore. And so we became Creole studio and we have a, an emphasis on, on luxury lifestyle uh, material. Um, but I'm actually getting back into the narrative game um, as a director. So that's where I hope you guys will find me in about a year from now is going to be um, directing TV and film. So um, that's my next, my next challenge. And so, um, you know, I'm, I, people can find me at creelstudio.com, I guess, is that you can see a lot of my, my recent, like, food and wine luxury stuff. Um, but I am really itching to get back to my narrative roots and so eager to um, – so I'm going to be doing some shadowing on some TV shows, and hopefully that's going to lead to a gig. And um, I'm working on a, a couple short films um, to use as more contemporary samples. I've made short films, award-winning short films in the past, but I'm making some sort of updated – samples um i did a short film called offside that i was really proud of um and led to some writing gigs and led some led some um work um but i feel like directing kind of brings it all together for me it's it's a yeah. you know i can i can use um all my photography and my cinematography and and you know i can you know I, like i said i <laughs> I even, you know, I, I even shoot films. I've shot a couple of short films and I worked, I've done second unit on things as a second unit DP or a second shooter, even as a DP. Um, and I really enjoy that. And I thought, oh, maybe I should be doing that. But I, but I really do think I'm more of a director than just a cinematography, although I do love the cinematography. So, um, so yeah, you know, I'm a fan of always, you know, keep evolving, keep changing. And um, turns out, you know, every the whole sort of system and world is is changing, and people are looking for, as you might have noticed, all sorts of content. And um, so it's a it seems to be a good time to be out there exploring and experimenting and hustling. So that's where where I'm at. And I I live in Hollywood, and I've got a family, and so I'm juggling, you know, two small boys, and and so I'm loving that, loving being a parent, and. Um, that's a blast. And I mentor, I just finished mentoring some young filmmakers on at the outset program, which is a program part of Outfest, which is the largest game lesbian film festival in America, I think, but in LA for sure. And um, so they have a young filmmakers program there and I mentor um, the young filmmakers there every year. And we just had the big screening this last weekend. It was really fun. So I, I enjoy that. I'll, you'll always find me looking for some way to, to work with young people and um, always awesome. find a camera. Somewhere, well, you mentioned the, you're shooting or, you know, or directing. You, know, you mentioned your family there, your two small boys. Uh, but uh, I feel like we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't ask about this amazing dog like creature that's rumored to be part lamb, part polar bear. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's a rescue dog, um, Millie. And um, she is, yeah, she's adorable. And, you know, it's, it was her first, it was like our, our test baby. You know, we had the dog and then like, okay, we didn't kill the dog. I guess we can go for an actual child. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it was, um, yeah, she's like 13 now, but, um, but yeah, so it's like, I, people are like, what are you up to? And I'm like, I, I do, you know, get a lot of joy and satisfaction for my family and doing family stuff. And we were out this morning with the boys down and watching skateboarding down at Venice beach. And, you know, we were going camping this weekend. So I do, I'm, I'm really grateful. That's what having my own company and being my own sort of boss allows me um, a lot of free time. And again, I, when I think about it, I feel so grateful and so lucky for this lifestyle that I, that I get to live and, um, and I get to really be with my kids while they're young and while they're growing up. And, um, so yeah, so I, I feel like I have a really full, amazing life and, uh, and, you know, Save by the Bell again was this thing I did years ago, never thinking it would be something that people would even care about, um, all these years later. So the moral of the story is uh, you never know when you work on stuff where that might end up. So like, <laughs> you, well, really, you don't know. You can't know. Um, 
how things are, you know, going to be perceived years later. So it's just, yeah, you know. It, is, and it wound up a part of the American lexicon. It lives uh, today on DVD and on Hulu currently. So uh, urge fans to, of course, go check it out. Leanna, we can't wait to see what all you have in store coming up. Uh, uh, you're such a talent, and we just can't thank you enough for, for joining us and doing this with us today. You're just so sweet to do this, and we've enjoyed it so much. So we'll keep in touch, and we'll uh, be on the lookout for everything you have coming up, okay? Okay, great. And thanks for tracking me down. <laughs> you bet. Thank All you right. so much. Okay. Talk, talk to you later. Bye-bye.